Okay, we are, uh, we are continuing our series, or concluding our series called Unstuck Today. And I want to review very quickly. Uh, first, we said, I'm, I'm going to use just sort of individual words. One, action. Uh, you got to get up and do something. Just move. You might move backwards, you might move forward, but move. Second, identify a, a, a destination, a sense of calling. So uh, wh what is it God's calling you to do? Where, where are you going? Uh, so the second word is calling. The third word is becoming. So, so there's a difference between what am I going to do and um, who am I going to become? Who am I going to be? Uh, how can God bring sanctification into my life? How can I be changed? So what am, who am I becoming? And then, then the fourth word is perseverance. We talked about that last week. That um, don't quit, but if you do quit, just come gently back and stay after it. Today I want to really talk about the why, and uh, the word is worship. And we're going to, to take a look at that. Pray with me. Gracious God, open us up. Open our eyes that we might see and open our ears that we might hear. Open our hearts that we might feel. And then, O oh Lord, open our hands that we might serve. Amen. It's really a simple story, but it gets me every time. Jesus is at the house of his friends, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Um, Martha is working in the kitchen. Mary is sitting at Jesus' feet. I picture it going on for some, some minutes, maybe an hour or so, where you can just feel Martha's resentment growing, right? It just gets more and more and more. I've, I, have, I have been sitting on the couch watching football, and I can feel it from the kitchen. <laughs> Right? It just kind of grows. The pots and pans are a little louder as they're clanking together, you know, <sighs> sighs and those kinds of things. I can picture it happening. And finally, Martha's had enough and she snaps. And she says, Jesus, tell my sister to get up and help me. And Jesus says, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. Only one thing is essential. Only one thing is needful, is the old phrase. And Mary's chosen it. It, it, it gets me because I, I realize that I, I kind of have that sort of building sense of resentment, too. It's not, it's not exactly resentment, but, um, you know, so you, you, you really feel like, I really feel like I'm called to do something for the kingdom, just something small or something big to advance the kingdom, and that it's not supposed to be easy, and that, I, that I'm going to have to work at it, and it's going to be a daily grind, and there are going to be tasks every day, and there are going to be things I have to do, and I work at it, and I work at it, and I work at it, and I want to make a difference in the world, and, but, but along the way, somehow I get detached from why I'm doing it. And, and, and the, the fire inside me that drives it begins to sort of die down. And the, the, um, the engine sputters. And I, I find myself just going through the motions with sort of, a, sort of a resentment. Like, what am I doing this for anyway? What's the point? I think that's what Jesus is getting at here. I want to lift up three things for you to see today. The first is sort of the most superficial, and that is that sometimes you have to stop along the way. You have to stop and just experience God's presence. It's always, I've always sort of resisted the idea that worship is to be, quote, a filling station. People will say, you know, I come to worship every week just so I can get filled up and do what God's called me to do through the week. And it's always bugged me a little because I don't view worship as a spectator sport, right? I don't think you're recipients and I'm offering. This is, uh, you're supposed to be worshiping, right? And you're supposed to be singing and, uh, and really engaged along the way and leaning forward. And I don't mean, I don't expect you to be jumping over pews or anything, but, uh, but you know, I, I like a little, little oomph in the deal, right? 
and then I think, it, because, it's, because I view worship as something you do, not something you receive. But the truth is, sometimes you've got to stop and receive something. You've got to stop and just be in the presence of God. Really, that's the essence of worship, is just being in the presence of God. Of, of absorbing, of receiving the presence, of, of drawing from the people who are around you, the community of the faithful, of coming together and, and worshiping. And I will tell you, if, uh, if you want to stay focused on your spiritual journey, making regular worship a part of your life, weekly worship matters. You have to, I think you need to do it every day. I, I really hope that the Bible study and prayer that you do is not just something else you have to accomplish. Boy, that is my biggest temptation, is that, okay, I have my prayer time. I can move on, right? It's not a task. It's a, it's a, a time of being in God's presence to receive something. It, it is, um, and what happens is, if, if we're not careful, we'll let our energy that we've devoted to trying to do something for God's kingdom, um, we'll miss the holy moments that are all around us. My, my uh, family communicates a great deal by text message. I guess we are uh, a 21st century family in some way, shape, or form, and so I've got a bunch of, of kids and sons-in-law, and so my... my um, a phone goes, bzz, 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 bzz. I'll come out of a meeting and there'll be 127 text messages, right? And I'll think, what, what? And then I got this iPhone watch and now it's like, mm, 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 right? All the time. And so finally I said to my kids, my family, hey, take me off of that. If there's something important, you can let me know. <laughs> Um, but I don't need to be on that list all the time, right? And so it goes on, and then one day I'll be sitting at dinner, and, and they'll say, they'll be talking about what happened on Wednesday, last Wednesday, and I'll be like, what happened last Wednesday? I didn't, well, your grandson took his first steps. I'm like, well, Dad, you want it off of the thing. <laughs> and so here, here's what happens. All of a sudden I realize something. See, I had viewed all of those text messages as the distractions. But isn't it funny that this scripture tells us that it's the work that's the distractions from the holy moments? Right? Sometimes what happens is we get so, we lean in so much to trying to do what we feel called to do that we miss the very presence of God along the way right there in the moment. We're so task focused that we miss the very presence of God along the way. I, I know I've shared with you before that one of my favorite books is The Little Prince. Um, my father gave it to me when I was just uh, in high school. And um, story of a little prince who goes traveling about various planets. And um, one of the planets, he, he comes across different characters, people, uh, on each of the planets, and on one of them he comes across a businessman. The fourth planet belonged to a businessman. This man was so much occupied that he did not even raise his head at the little prince's arrival. Good morning, the little prince said to him. Your cigarette has gone out. Three and two make five, five and seven make twelve, twelve and three make fifteen. Good morning. Fifteen and seven make twenty-two, twenty-two and six make twenty-eight. I haven't had time to light it again. Twenty-six and five make thirty-one. Phew, that makes five hundred and one million six hundred twenty-two thousand seven hundred thirty-one. Five hundred million what? asked the little prince. Eh, are you still there? 501 million, I can't stop. I have so much to do. I am concerned with matters of consequence. I don't amuse myself with balderdash. Two and five make seven. Oh man, that could be me. I'm not counting the stars like he is, but I am so concerned with matters of consequence that I miss the visit from the prince. Stop along the way. Okay, here's the second thing, and I think it's really the most significant part of it. It's really the core. We don't need to work like Martha to earn God's approval, God's acceptance. 
to earn our salvation, if you will. We don't need to do that. No, what, we don't earn it, but what we do is we say thank you. We say thank you with our lives. We say thank you and I love you. Anytime uh, Steven Spielberg and Tom Hanks get together, it's good, right? It's always good. And uh, maybe you've seen the movie Saving Private Ryan. It's one of my favorites. In, uh, there's a, a point near the end of the movie. Well, you, if you don't know the plot, uh, Captain John Miller goes into um, France just after Normandy uh, to rescue, save Private James Ryan because both of his brothers have already been killed in the war. And it, as a uh, humanitarian effort, they're going to, to bring him home sort of for his mother's sake. And so Captain Miller and his little team of guys go in to, uh, to try and save uh, uh, James Ryan. Well, they do save him. They find him finally. And the very, near the very end, uh, Captain Miller gets killed in this effort. And, and James Ryan comes up to him near the end, and um, Captain Miller just mutters something as he's dying. Uh, here's how it goes. He says... Um, he says, what, sir? That's what uh, James Ryan says to Captain Miller. And Captain Miller mutters something again. And he says, uh, what? And he says, earn this. Earn this. And then he dies. The, the last scene of the movie is a much, much older James Ryan, now a grandfather. He's brought his, his kids and his grandkids with him. And he's standing at, he's gone back to Normandy, standing at the grave there. And he says to the grave of, uh, of Captain Miller, every day I think about what you have said to me that day on the bridge. I tried to live my life the best I could. I hope that was enough. I know, I hope that at least in your eyes, I've earned what all of you have done for me. And then he looks at his wife and says, tell me I've led a good life. She says, what? He says, tell me I'm a good man. She says, you are. Now, it's a powerful scene, but it's sad. It's not good theology at all. <laughs> right? Because what he's doing is he's living out of this deficit. He's living out of this place that somehow I have to earn what Jesus, what Captain Miller did for him. And I think a lot of times that's how we live our Christian life. God has done this amazing thing. He gave his, his son's life for us. Now I've got to earn that. I've got I've to be good enough. He says that here. I hope that I've been good enough. Friends, you're never going to be good enough. You are already in God's eyes more than good enough. Right? That's the great joy of this. We, we operate not out of a deficit trying to earn it, we operate out of an overflow, out of God's grace poured into our lives. So we still work hard. We still give ourselves. We still try and be good people. We still try and become, but we don't sort of do it out of this yearning, this, oh, goodness, I hope I'm good enough. We do it because we know we're good enough. Because we've been clothed in the righteousness of Christ and we do it out of thanksgiving and gratitude for what God has done for us. It's an entirely different mental picture. It has much of the same um, action response, but it's driven by an altogether different uh, mentality. Norlin Carpenter is our um, coordinator of worship. She... Uh, does all sorts of stuff. Just she she kind of holds us together, to be honest. Uh, otherwise, no telling what would happen here on Sunday mornings. And uh, her father was a professor, Southern Baptist professor of missions, Southwestern uh, Theological Seminary. And um, one day, uh, as he grew older, he um, got to the point where he couldn't take care of himself, and he was in a skilled nursing facility. And one of his uh, um, students, someone who he had mentored, came to see him. And she asked him a question. At first, it sounded to me like she was chiding him. It sounded a little cruel. But uh, it wasn't in that spirit. It was, I want to learn more from you in this, this last uh, part of your life. And she said, um, so what can you do for God now? 
And he responded, I can love him. And she said, well, how, how can you show your love to him? You can't really do anything. And he said, I can tell him. You, you see, there's this just basic response that I want to love you. I'm going to, I'm, that's what worship is. See, that's, and, and that's what drives all that we do. We don't do it in order to be, to have this sort of should, I, I'm supposed to, I've got to earn it back. Uh, that, that sort of leads me to the last component that's important. It, I don't want you to get the, the, the sense that, the, that what, what Martha did wrong was she worked. Right? We work. I mean, that's life. That's, and that's what God calls us to do. The, the issue isn't that Martha, that Mary did the right thing by, I mean, he's not affirming laziness here. All right? Don't, don't miss that. He, what he's doing, though, is saying what, what Martha missed that Mary had was Jesus. Right? Was you really, he says, only one thing is needed. Only one thing is needed. Sometimes I realize that I work out of that needy place. I need to be successful. I need to be uh, seen by my children as a good father and my wife as a good husband and my mother as a good son. I, I, I need to, to be all of these things. I, I need my congregation to, to think I'm a good pastor. So I have all this sort of operate out of this place of neediness. Um, and what, what uh, Jesus says to me is, Tom, Tom, you are worried and distracted by so many things. There's only one thing that's really needed, and that's me. Jesus says, that's all you really need. And so that as we work, that work is an offering given to Christ. It is a way of worshiping. We did a, uh, a sermon series a few Lenten seasons ago called Everyday Worship, and we talked about all, how we transform every part of our lives into offer, offerings of worship. That's what I would encourage you to do. So, um, friends, uh, I hope you get unstuck. Get up and get moving. Uh, identify a calling and work hard to accomplish it. Um, uh, uh, claim certain specific values for yourself and work hard to become someone who lives those values. Let the, let the Spirit of God sanctify you that you might become more like His Son Christ. And when you get knocked down, get back up. And when you quit, Come gently back and start again. But don't do any of it out of this uh, sense of deficit. Do it all as a way of just saying, I love you. Thank you. Let's pray together as we join together in the uh, sacrament of Holy Communion. Gracious and loving God, um, we thank you for what you have done for us. And as we come to receive this sacrament, may we recognize that it is indeed a gift. We have no hoops we have to jump through, uh, no, no good enough that we have to be, but simply that you love us and we love you. In the name of Christ we pray, amen.